coming. Yeah, Amber. Hold on, I'm coming in. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to everybody except for people who say that my voice sounds like a young Justin Bieber's. It's on YouTube. So you know that movie Legally Blonde? That amazing, adorable movie that helped us all grow into strong, independent women? Have you ever been watching that movie and thought to yourself like, man, this movie's really good and all, but I wish there were another movie exactly like it, only worse? Have you ever thought that? Neither have I, but uh, too bad because unfortunately such a movie exists. A movie exactly like Legally Blonde, but a lot lot worse. Today we're talking about the 2007 movie Blonde Ambition, <gasps> starring Jessica Simpson, Andy Dick, Willie Nelson, and you guessed it, Luke Wilson. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's right guys. This movie wanted to be Legally Blonde so badly that it even insisted on casting the same actor to play the main character's love interest. <laughs> I'm not kidding, he is the same character. This is literally the same movie as Legally Blonde. There's only a few differences. There's more product placement, worse makeup, Jessica Simpson making weird faces, a really weird side plot with a toothbrush. Thanks, fat fall. And my least favorite difference of all, there is no Paulette Bonafonte character. No. Lame. Never underestimate a beautiful blonde with big, Ambitions. Oh my God, gag me. <laughs> by the way, this movie was produced by Joe Simpson, Jessica's dad and his production company called Papa Joe Films or something. Papa Joe. <laughs> um, gross. So put on your blonde wigs, you big bodacious bimbos. Let's talk about blonde ambitions. <laughs> Red cooking dinner because it's so inconvenient. Measuring ingredients can be hard, especially when you can't find the teaspoon. Mm. Consider HelloFresh, where you can get fresh, proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Look how simply she removes them from the bag. No more losing hot dogs on your unstable grill for your dog to steal. Uh oh, five second rule, Fido. HelloFresh makes eating well easier with family friendly, calorie smart, pescatarian, and veggie options every week. Did you forget how to drive to the grocery store during quarantine? What do I do? Not to worry. Skip the grocery store with HelloFresh and get your food shipped right to your door in packaging that's almost entirely made from recyclable material. Mmm, so sustainable. Look at that gorgeous paper bag. No more thinking you have a delicious ingredient, but it turns out to be rotten. HelloFresh produce gets to you faster than a grocery store, so it arrives at peak freshness and flavor. Look at that beautiful cabbage. Jamie here made these tantalizing tacos for Taco Tuesday. Tasty. To try HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com slash JamieSaid14 and use code JamieSaid14 for up to 14 free meals. And that's HelloFresh.com slash JamieSaid14 for up to 14 free meals. Thanks HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and paying these guys salaries. Thanks HelloFresh. Thanks HelloFresh. And now, back to the show. We're back friends and we're doing makeup today. Did you miss the makeup? I kind of did, I don't know. Maybe I'll regret it. Oh God, yes. So the movie opens exactly the same as Legally Blonde opens with some really cute shots of the main character's bedrooms. There's pit collages and stuff, it's cute. So Jessica Simpson plays the main character, Katie. We get to meet her here and her fiance, Billy. So he leaves for New York and fast forward three months. <laughs> This is not my color, oh my God. And Katie is keeping busy working in her Pat Paw Willie Nelson store. Yeah, her grandpa is played by Willie Nelson, but she calls him Pat Paw in this movie. Really nice, Pat Paw. <laughs> Couldn't figure out how to program. Isn't that cute? Anyway, she's working at Pat Paw's store, which sells cell phones, bridal equipment, <laughs> guns, stuffed animals, basically everything you need to start your life. I'm gonna ask you something. You be my Valentine. You know I'm an engaged woman. Come on, Billy. Billy's been gone for three months. What about Marianne over there? I heard she's got a crush on you. Oh yeah, and they also sell Valentine's Day stuff. So Papa ends up gifting Katie a trip to New York to go visit Billy because he's weirdly invested in their relationship throughout this whole movie. Stop it. So we got her a bus ticket, a flip phone, and a toothbrush. I almost forgot. 
In case you get nervous, sweetheart. Yeah, guys, Katie brushes her teeth when she's nervous. Isn't that so quirky and funny and not at all the dumbest thing you've ever heard in your life? Speaking of makeup, I just want to briefly talk about the makeup right here in this scene. What in the Mamie from Drew Carey am I looking at right now? <laughs> not only in this scene, but in this whole movie is so heinous. I mean, I kind of get it. They wanted her to like look dumb before she goes through her big transformation, her big glow up, but it's bad. Just be prepared. <laughs> So she arrives in New York City to surprise Billy. But first she has to take a cab ride to his apartment and the cab ride is just, it should win an Oscar. Surprise my fiance. He's a model, he's really cute. Look what I made him. <laughs> I made him this on the way over here. Oh my God, how cute for your literal grown man fiance. Almost as cute as his literal grown man cab driver's rubber ducky. Anyway, she is pretty oblivious to the cab driver being very clearly annoyed with her. She's just busy curling her already curled hair with this very obvious not turned on curling iron. I just got engaged. You're doing it wrong. Mr. Nebula, Nebula honey, honey. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, I keep hitting this thing. So Katie arrives at Billy's apartment and she hops in bed with him, but she somehow doesn't see that there's an entire other woman in bed with her fiance. <laughs> Mm. What you? What is that? Oh, Billy denies even knowing this woman in his bed. He's like, oh, I don't know who that is. Literally throws a blanket over her. He's like, if you don't see her, she's not there. So it turns out during his three months in New York, he has become a successful hand model. You're a hand model? And also started cheating on Katie. You know what guys, he ends up dumping her. He dumps his fiance of 15 years because she is dragging him down. You know, he's going places and she's dragging him down. Everything has changed for me here. It's like before I was an eagle. And now I've just blossomed into um a bigger eagle. Does that sound familiar? If I'm gonna be a senator, well, I need to marry a Jackie, not a Marilyn. Side note, can we talk about the fact that Billy and Katie were together for 15 years? Fif 15 years. And she does not even shed a tear. She doesn't even really hardly react. 15 years is longer than my marriage. I would have had a reaction. Damn it. How could you do this to me? Everything has changed for me here. Yeah, I know. I heard you changed your name and everything. What is it again? I'm Billy. Okay, Billy. Well, you're acting strange. Petpa said you moved on to some black haired baloney lover. That's the common woman I need in my life right now. Uh, who that? Not me. Her. <laughs> Are you forgetting what I bought you for our anniversary last year? An eagle. Yes. I literally captured a bald eagle for you. What more could you want? Hi, baloney. A bigger eagle. So she throws her ring away that is definitely from Party City. <laughs> And then she goes to stay with her cousin Haley. And guess who Haley is played by, guys? It's Rachel Lee Cook. That's right, y'all. Lainey Bugs is gracing us with her presence today. This is her third appearance on my channel. How fun. So anyway, cousin Haley is a wannabe actress with really weird friends. In. Mm -hmm. See. See? So Katie starts making her way over to cousin Haley's house, but unfortunately there's a delay getting there because her fully zipped suitcase miraculously comes <gasps> unzipped just as she's crossing over one of those steamy sidewalk grates. <laughs> How very Marilyn of you, only worse. She's distressed, you guys. She's gotta sit there with her toothbrush and call Haley. She's like, can I stay with you? I'm really upset. Absolutely, Um, I have a rehearsal, but the super can let you in. We're blessed with even more toothbrush action as Katie arrives to Haley's miserable New York City apartment. Actually, I wanna talk about this apartment, okay? I, I wrote the word miserable, but it's really not miserable. It's just, you know, it's a little chaotic. <laughs> part of me feels like it's a miserable dump, but the other part of me feels like it's so bussin'. So Katie sits there with her toothbrush for what appears to be many hours. And you can always tell time has passed into nighttime in this movie because they just turn everything blue. Everything is blue. Haley's apartment, Haley's dump, this hallway, this party. Yeah, it's so devoid of color that I wanna gouge my eyes out and it's blue. Okay. So cousin Haley invites Katie to stay with her in New York. She's like, don't go home. Get a fresh start. And Katie's like, okay. So she decides she's gonna stay in NYC for a little while, you know, live it up. The next morning, Katie is soups ratchet with her busted makeup and you guessed it, her toothbrush. She does not look bussin'. So it turns out cousin Haley has an audition that morning for the musical Cats. I got an audition for Cats. So she really needs Katie to fill in for her at her day job as a bike messenger. She's like, whatever you do, don't leave my bike on the street. 
remember that. She couldn't have been a waitress. I can guarantee being a waitress is a lot harder. <laughs> Friends, we're gonna take a short break and when we come back, Luke Wilson. See you there. Hey guys, we're back. So Katie ends up falling into a hole and we finally get to meet Ben, played by Luke Wilson. He helps her out of the hole and then he asks her out to dinner. I don't really date guys, I meet in holes. Neither do I. I mean, already we have something in common. <laughs> that was actually funny. I like Luke. So she goes to make a delivery inside this building. It's like a, at first I thought it was a law firm, but then the second time I watched it, turns out it's a building firm. So she finally makes her way into this building firm, but she she just can't get in. Because remember guys, remember what Haley said? Whatever you do, don't leave my bike on the street. So she has to bring her literal bike inside this building firm and it just couldn't possibly be more obnoxious. Just, just push it. Oh, oh, oh. I like how that extra was like, just push it. Just, just push it. Yeah, just push it. Push it. Pu push it real good. That was a bad joke. Joke. So she just eats it. She falls, and I think we finally have a winner for the best fall in our female protagonist fall montage that I'm definitely going to be inserting right now. That's embarrassing. There's a lot of off screen dialogue in this movie. Like someone out of view will say something or scream something. Thanks for bringing that by. All right, I'm glad I saw you. That's embarrassing. And you just don't know where it came from. It's a mystery. So guys, welcome to Betty's desk. Mr. Connolly's office. Betty is the current secretary to the CEO of this building firm who this lady, Deborah, absolutely despises. I despise you. Over in the elevator, uh, who's in charge of lighting? for the scene because you failed. Everything is blue. So quick recap, friends. They are at a building firm called Connolly & Connolly. The firm is run by this guy, Richard, played by Larry Miller from 10 Things I Hate About You. And this mean lady, Deborah, works for him. Enter Andy Dick. He is here. His character's name is Freddy. Deborah and Freddy are conspiring, okay? Deborah really wants the CEO Richard's job. If only the board were aware of his negligence on that marina deal, mm -hmm. then they would fire him and I'd have his job. And they also need to get rid of Betty. No, I could have her removed. I know for a fact she takes the subway. I could easily push her. Well, I'd probably have to get a friend to help me push her in front of me. No. She's a big one. Yeah, by the way, guys, this movie didn't age well. That goes without saying. They need, like, a new secretary. They need somebody that they can manipulate. Some sort of dumb blonde bimbo. I wonder who it'll be. Get someone we can manipulate. Manipulate. Make can look bad. Yes. Then I'd be president. So Katie comes out of the elevator. She runs right over Deborah's shoe with her bike, and oh my god, it's chaos. I saw yeah. Deborah! Who yelled Deborah? Deborah? Andy Dick, was that you? I'm you evil breasting beast. <laughs> so Freddie and Deborah are like, hey, wait a minute. This girl is the perfect naive blonde bimbo dummy that we've been searching for. So they end up taking her out to lunch and Deborah speaks a lot without moving her mouth. You see, I do it to Freddie all the time. You see, I do it to You see, I do it to Always one of my favorite things to find in a movie. Brain fart, I smelled it. What? Brain fart. They offer Katie a job, which she accepts, and Andy Dick is very overzealous. Sounds like a great idea. Yes! Okay, yeah, it must have been him earlier that yelled Deborah, <laughs> judging by that squeal. Deborah! Yes! So Katie accepts their offer. They do kind of an awkward three-person handshake, and Katie makes it weird. Uh -oh. Oh, so quirky. See, you guys, are you catching on here? Everybody kind of treats Katie like she's dumb because she's a beautiful, bodacious blonde and she's super innocent and nice to everybody. But really, secretly, she's a super smart boss beeb. Does that sound familiar? Oh, is this like an RSVP thing? No, it's like a smart people thing. Back over at Haley's place, things are weird. Oh. Oh! Ryan Dunn is there. He is in this movie for some reason, which we all love and appreciate because we all miss him, right? It was good to see him, even though his character's gross. See? Oh my God! Your friends kind of creep me out. Yeah. Hey, wait, these are real. Yeah, they're creepy, no big deal. Yeah. Back at the firm, Katie shows up for her interview looking like she got dressed at Pat Paw's store. We need to make some changes. You know what to do, Freddy. And guess what that means, guys? Makeover time! <laughs> It's a good makeover montage. Jessica Simpson's makeup keeps changing. There's a little clothes trying on clip and I wanna know, has this guy ever seen the sun? <laughs> 
That's kind of mean. She gets her eyebrows tweezed and you can really tell that he is tweezing them good. So fun fact, this guy, the tweezer guy, is actually Jessica Simpson's real life hairstylist, Ken Pavez, and he's doing her hair with his brand of extensions, so product placement. So Katie is all done. She gets her glow up. She looks amazing, by the way. Let's all acknowledge that. And uh, suddenly there are only dudes who work at this office. Men, 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 manly men, men, men. So meanwhile, while all this makeover fun is happening, Freddie is busy getting Betty fired. First, he distracts her. Um, I think I saw your nephew down in the lobby. Tyrone? I, yeah, mm-hmm. Well, we thought he was dead. And then he plants paraphernalia all over her desk. He puts like airplane shots in her filing cabinet, just sprinkles pills everywhere. <laughs> and then calls security on her. Security? I've been free! Wait a minute! Sorry, Betty. Bye-bye. I'll make sure to clean. You know what, Andy Dick? You're a real dummy. So now it's time to falsify Katie's resume. I was homecoming queen three years in a row and I was in charge of all the pep rallies and all the decorations. Oh, that's really cute and special and it sounds really familiar. And I was a Zeta Lambda new sweetheart, president of my sorority Delta, and last year I was homecoming queen. So they totally falsify her resume, tell a bunch of lies about how she went to Harvard. Harvard? I'm going to Harvard. So on her way to her job interview with Mr. Conley, Katie bumps into Luke Wilson. Sorry about that. I'm gonna call maintenance, go get a new card, excuse me. Hey. She is really nervous about all this, about her new environment, but thankfully Ben is very experienced and he offers her some advice. So you mind if I just, can I give you a little advice? Try and relax. When you go in there, just take it easy. Dick's a real pussy cat, you know? Yeah, and speak, speak up, up in Callahan's, Callahan's class, he really, really likes people, people who are opinionated. opinionated. It's the same movie, guys, I'm just saying. He says I'm nervous. Yeah, guys, I'm perfectly calm. Can't you tell by my stupid toothbrush? So finally we get to meet Mr. Connolly, who's the CEO of this firm, and he doesn't like Jessica Simpson or her teeth. I don't like you. <laughs> and that horsey grin insults us both. What's wrong with your teeth? However, he is very impressed with her falsified resume, and he ends up hiring her because he just lost Betty and he needs somebody right now. <laughs> All right, no bouncing. <laughs> No bouncing. So we are actually going to take a short break and when we come back, Katie immediately gets fired. <laughs> See you there. Hey guys, we're back with Jessica Simpson's dad. Thanks, man. So guys, Mr. Connolly is really struggling with this particular client he's trying to land. He really needs this guy to show up to a spec house, but the guy can't cause like it's his weekend with his daughter. Inside. What? Don't tell me the guy won't be there. What do I care if it is his weekend with the damn daughter? Tell him not to get divorced next time. So Katie comes up with a brilliant plan. Ice cream social. She's gonna do this ice cream social for the client's daughter and Freddie and Deborah, I'm sorry, Frebra, they're gonna sabotage it. How wonderful that you were able to save Richard from losing such a big account. Freddie and I are gonna do whatever it takes to make sure your party is a smashing success. They literally sabotage this ice cream social to the nth degree it becomes a complete disaster he pours rock star energy drinks into the kids milkshakes so they're all just losing their minds he stabs the bouncy house puts on a morbid puppet show he puts straight up firecrackers in the pinata there's police strippers it's bad oh, listen, I, I, I'm not into it. <laughs> the client's daughter ends up getting stuck in the deflating bouncy house but don't worry because katie's coming in hold on i'm coming in hey, John, I'm coming. yeah amber hold on i'm coming in <laughs> Where is my daughter? The way um, I rock it. Oh God. Someone help Jessica Simps. So anyway, Katie's fired. Am I fired? Read between the lines, Miss Gregor Stitch. Luke Wilson gives her another pep talk. He's all like the Katie Gregor Stitch I know would never give up this easily. I wouldn't expect a little technicality like that to stop somebody like Katie Gregor Stitch. You know, the Katie Gregor Stitch that I've known for 48 hours that I've had a total of two conversations with, she would never give up. Really the reason I'm including this little pep talk scene is again, because of the weird lighting. They want you to think that this was filmed at night, but instead of just filming it at night, they just filmed it during the daytime and then changed the the exposure and color tones in post-production. See, look, I can even do it for you. Now it's nighttime. So the next day, Katie convinces Mr. Connolly to give her her job back. She convinces him by like throwing things. 
and he decides to give her another chance contingent on her being able to help him score another big client. And by big client, I mean a bunch of Norwegian priests. <laughs> you speak fluent Norwegian, right? I don't speak Norwegian. Shh. Of course you don't, honey. Well, why'd you put it on my resume? So guys, how do you think Katie's gonna entertain the Norwegians? Wanna take a guess? I'll give you a hint, it's this. Welcome to New York. Joe Simpson just has no qualms objectifying his daughter. He's like, everybody oogle my daughter's bobos. It'll make us more money. So Freddie, of course, sabotages her again. We are full art in flicker. Look there on flisk. Yakash, <laughs> yakash. I googled the uh, habits and customs of Norwegia. <gasps> Norwegia. We love that word. Norwegian. Not to worry guys, because her and Luke Wilson come up with an amazing solution to entertain them. I like big boots and I can't lie. You guys, I, I can't make this stuff up. What's going on with this DJ, by the way? <laughs> it's a fun hat and all, but. <laughs> I wonder if it's okay that they're doing that. It is. It is okay. Who's your favorite priest? My favorite one is this guy right here in the back. I wanna go bowling with him. So guys, the Sir Mix-a-Lot karaoke party worked. The Norwegian priest signed the deal and then we're blessed with a montage of Katie just killing it. You know, she's doing well. She helps Mr. Connolly with so many more cases. Can't find the Quackenbush final. Mr. Driftwood is coming at three. <laughs> Quackenbush and Mr. Driftwood. The names in this movie are so outrageous. <laughs> Gregory Gregor stitch. This montage bothers me again. It reminded me a lot of the one from Legally Blonde where Elle Woods kind of starts to get the hang of things. She starts reading up on law, studying. And I feel like it was done so much better because there was an actual progression. There was a buildup. It was like first she knew nothing. She got all her answers wrong. She got kicked out of class. She studied. She showed improvement over time. You know, that's a good montage. This was just, first she's like completely dim-witted and knows nothing about running a business firm. And then out of nowhere, there's just this montage of her kids killing it and wearing real wiggy wigs. That is the wiggiest wig I've ever seen. Why did they do that? Why did they put a wig on her? Her hair is already blonde. And why is Andy Dick sharpening a pen? He held it there for so long. So now we get to the beginning of an important little side plot known as the Marina Project. The key to this Marina deal is the boulder. Mr. Connolly decides to let her in on a big deal he's been trying to close for a long time known as the Marina deal. Aw, oh, hey Billy. Did your hand modeling career not work out? Is it because you got dirty fingernails? So guys, Deborah is not. N-A-W-T not happy about Katie being added to the Marina deal. She got kicked off of it earlier in the movie. She's super jealous and she's like, you know what, let me just help you out and take this file home. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure. Remember that guys, okay? Later that night, Ben and Katie end up having a pizza date for which Katie borrowed a shirt from Steve from Blue's Clues. They're falling in love. Did you forget to hold the handle down when you flush the toilet? That might be the most romantic thing anyone's ever said to me. They're starting to fall in love when suddenly who decides to pay Katie an impromptu visit but Pat Paw. Good thing she miraculously got that red lipstick smear off her face by the time she got over to the door. Pat Paw. So Katie is obviously there with Luke Wilson and not with Billy and Katie just doesn't have the heart to tell her grandpa that she's not with Billy anymore because again, Pat Paw is weirdly invested in Katie and Billy's relation. Go to New York, see old Billy and surprise you. How is my future grandson? So, where's Billy? Stop it. So, she ends up lying and telling Papa that Ben is just the plumber. My name's Ben. Ben, ben. the plumber. Gosh, and the lighting in this scene is so heinous. Look how green everybody is, just barfy, yellowy green. In fact, it's so green and barfy that I need to take a break. And when we come back, everything comes crashing down for Katie. Don't miss it. So Katie comes into work the next day and Freddie is in her seat. Weird, right? He tells her that there is some sort of emergency board meeting and I am assuming that it probably is stressing her out, but we'll never know. We'll never know how she felt about this because the entire shot of her, the camera is out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Why not just do another take? It happens to me all the time. Just do another take. So Katie bursts into this board meeting only to find Deborah is sabotaging everything. She has spilled the beans about Katie's falsified resume that Deborah herself falsified. She gets Mr. Connolly fired. She even does the dreaded circle walk, which you know in a movie means things are serious. There's no way you're gonna get away with this. Anyway, at this point, there's nothing Katie can really do because turns out Deborah has also purchased the deed to Pat Paw's store. You know, that store that sells guns and bridal stuff. She somehow owns it now, which I forgot to tell you about. Another thing that is revealed during this conversation, you guys, plot twist, turns out Ben, he is the CEO of Mr. Connolly's son. And that freeloading son of his, what was his name again, Frederick? I believe he goes by the name Ben. Ben? Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to the Big Apple, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, please stop laughing. You're up here, we need you down here. <laughs> Sit the next few rounds out. Back at the garbage dump, Billy shows up, which is very inconvenient, because remember, Willie is also there. Billy and Willie, they're both there. Willie looks real wide-eyed during this conversation. Billy ends up blurting out this like impromptu lie. And we were both just saying how great it would be to move back to Minden. Together. Because remember, Pat Paw doesn't know that her and Billy are actually broken up. Katie, this is the perfect opportunity for you to be like, um, actually, no. I caught Billy cheating on me with a stripper named Aphrodite. Sorry, Gramps. She doesn't. She goes along with it. The next morning, they're packing. They're getting ready to leave. And guys, if you thought that Pat Paw was just a wide-eyed, brainless dingbat who couldn't open drawers, you were wrong. Turns out Pat Paw is very insightful and he had a suspicion. So he did a little digging. And by digging, I mean he asked Cousin Haley. He was like, yo, Haley, what's the matter? with Katie. She seems to be acting a little bit crazy. <laughs> Wait a minute, I also forgot about Cousin Haley. Where has she been this whole time? So anyway, the cat's out of the bag. Papa knows what's going on. And he thinks that what Billy did is a real low down, dirty thing for him to do. And what in the 2001 body glitter am I looking at? Papa's like, you know what? I got a plan. Let me tell you what we're gonna do. He whispers in her ear and he's got a sneaky, clever, amazing master plan. I'll tell you what let's do. And you know what it is? Are you ready? He's just gonna take Billy home and Jessica's gonna stay. They set it up to where I thought something a lot more exciting was gonna happen. I expected a little more tomfoolery. I can't believe poor Papa has to drive all the way back to Minden with Billy the hand smeller. <laughs> So the next day, Deborah is about to close on the big marina deal. And unfortunately, Katie can't stop it because they've banned her from the building. So she ends up having to hitch a ride with the creepy window cleaner guy. It's a scary ride, but thankfully she has her toothbrush. You like to brush your teeth? Nervous. So he takes her up to the top of the building and oh my gosh, this is the worst green screen work I've ever seen. It's like as bad as mine. Look at it flicker. <laughs> Seriously though, why do my green screen videos do that too? And why does a movie with a $10 million budget look as bad as my movies that have $9 budgets? The window guy's hair is also green, meaning they were too close to the green screen and the green like spilled onto the subject. It's like green screen 101, okay? <laughs> Moving on. So she gets in the building, Ben's there. Her and Ben miraculously have a plan that they never came up with. Is Deborah taken care of? Yeah, I spoke to your cousin. I'm so when? When did you speak to cousin Haley? When did when did you come up with this entire plan? Because yesterday when Katie asked you to help her, you totally snubbed her. We haven't forgotten. Okay, so this next little twist is actually kind of clever and fun. It turns out that the real Marina clients are waiting in a separate office while the evil Frebra are presenting to a group of imposters. And by imposters, I mean cousin Haley and her weird theater friends. Remember them? What a genius plan. I didn't see this coming. I really didn't. I'm proud. So guys, I know you don't care, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, the whole problem with this whole marina project is that wherever they wanna build it, there's a big massive boulder that's like messing up their building plans. Do I know what the building plans are? Nope. Does it matter? Also, nope. So, while Evil Deb and Freddy are suggesting to the fake clients that they blow the boulder up, Elle Woods, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I mean, Katie Gregorstitch, is suggesting a better idea to the real clients. We use the boulder and we turn it into an extreme sports bonanza. And then the baddies could run around and lose weight and be healthy. Wait, what? Movies back in the day had zero chill, man. They were so metal. Well, eventually Deborah catches on to what's happening because Haley and her friends are terrible actors. What? And she's like, you know what? This isn't the Marina group. This is Rachel Lee Cook and Ryan Dunn. Imposters. They take off Rachel Lee Cook's wig. They try to pull Ryan Dunn's beard off. It's chaotic. Trail, 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 trail. She walks into the hallway. Her and Katie have a face off.
Okay, first of all, I'm impressed. Second of all, I'm sure I could break a toothbrush too. <laughs> I can't do it. That was uncalled for. Oh my gosh. Okay, the one girl was like, I'm gonna break your toothbrush, but Katie was straight up like, I'm gonna break your face. She really woke up and chose violence. So I just love the conclusion of this meeting because the Marina group, which are these like professional business people are all of a sudden just 100% team Katie, even though they have no idea, they have no background knowledge. They don't know what's going on. They're there for business reasons. This lady ends up even encouraging Katie to call Deborah the B word. So realistic. Gosh. Even more realistic. So guys, everything ends up falling into place. Mr. Connolly gets his job back. He lands the marina deal. He hugs it out with his son. He also somehow gets the deed back to Pat Paw's store. Katie and Ben kiss. No, actually, no, they don't kiss. I forgot. Ben's really upset because he saw her like snogging Billy in the alley when he was bringing her a plunger. I forgot to tell you guys that. <laughs> Thankfully though, Mr. Connolly convinces him to go get the girl. Put your arms around her and don't let go. Thanks, Dad. He runs a chase after her, but oh no, she's in a cab and holy green screen. <laughs> Again, some of the worst green screen work I've ever seen, and I feel so bad saying that because I'm not trying to like be mean, but I don't think it should be as bad as mine. Anyway, Ben steals a motorized scooter and he's just chasing her down and she's like, pull over, pull over, but the cab driver's all like, no. Lady, I can't stop you. Why would the cab driver help you? Have you forgotten what happened a few days ago? Mr. Nebula, Nebula honey. Okay, actually, I'm just noticing watching this for the third time that she covers the dude's eyes to get him to stop. <laughs> So Ben ends up falling into the same hole that she fell into at the beginning of the movie, which I do not like and I do not think is cute or clever. Maybe I like it a little bit. Even though the dust started kicking up before he fell into the hole. <laughs> Whatever, it's a cute moment, I will admit it. Even the construction guys are clapping. And as I was watching the camera kind of pan away and the movie come to an end, I couldn't stop thinking about Betty. Ziggy has done it again. <laughs> Remember Betty, what what are we gonna do about Betty here? Okay, because it seems like everything has worked out for everybody except for Betty, right? Well, I am happy to report that the creators of this movie did one singular thing right in that they brought back Betty. <laughs> Freddy, are you trying to turn me on? Cause it's working. Wow, so Betty is very forgiving. We should all aspire to be like Betty. Anyway, guys, that is the end. I am very upset because I kind of suddenly right now feel like I like this movie. <laughs> ah! Why do I suddenly think the toothbrush thing is quirky and cute? I love Willie Nelson. I love Luke Wilson. I love Jessica Simpson. I love Betty. I don't know what to say, guys. It grew on me. They always do. So let's look up our fun facts, shall we? So the budget for this film was $10 million and it says opening weekend in the US and Canada, it grossed $1,322. And this genuinely confused me. Like I wanna laugh and like make fun of it, but I'm really just confused. So I checked Wikipedia. And according to Wikipedia, it says Blonde Ambition was released into eight theaters in Texas, the home state for the stars Simpson and Wilson before a DVD release date on January 22nd, 2008. The the film averaged $48 per screen for a total box office of $384, meaning that based on an $8 ticket price, six people paid to see the film at each of those eight theaters, and 48 people in total went to see the film. Opening weekend, the film finished 54th at the North American box office with a three-day gross of $1,300. I really don't know a lot about the film industry. I don't understand how this is possible, but it just sounds like a really big Big bummer. Let's read some reviews, shall we? I'm gonna read you the top review that was like featured at the top of the IMDb page, okay? I saw this movie on the internet and it was nothing but a waste of time and money. Jessica Simpson is a terrible actress and her recent music records have failed. Since divorcing, she has pretty much nothing, very little talent, and she must love showing off her dark roots. Oh my gosh. This is the top review. Are you kidding me? I wanna Talk to whoever wrote this. First of all, don't bring up people's marriages, okay? Second of all, did you really say very little talent? Have we all forgotten the magic that is Jessica Simpson's vocals? Yeah, 
Jessica Simpson is an amazingly talented singer. I didn't think she was a bad actress either. This movie sucks, but it wasn't her fault. I don't like this reviewer. I'm upset. They're all like this. Look at this one. Another Joe Simpson dumpster fire. Jessica Simpson has the acting ability of Anna Nicole Smith. I'm guessing that Luke Wilson had some gambling debts to pay off or something. That's the only explanation I could come up with as to why he would be involved in this train wreck. Whatever the case, I hope he has fired his idiot agent. I would strongly recommend that the director or writer of this tribe find another line of work. Joe Simpson should just beach himself on a deserted island and leave us all alone. Guys, man, it makes me feel like I make fun of movies, okay, but <laughs> I'm not that mean, right? I don't even have those feelings. How could you be that angry over a movie? It's creepy. Well, friends, that's it for me today. Thank you for being here, for watching, for sitting through this heinous Legally Blonde ripoff with me. Tell me what movies you want in the comment section down below. And just a little side note for those of you who are still here. I just wanted you to know something exciting. I know you guys all love my husband and you're like obsessed with him. I mean, so am I, but I'm just kidding. Uh, Nick has Instagram now, so please follow him over there. He's gonna be posting like fun stuff, behind the scenes stuff, hashtag behind the scenes, hashtag couple goals. Are you, can you imagine missing out on stuff like that? I'm just kidding, but it's exciting. I know you guys have been waiting for Nick for a long time, so there he is, go follow him. As for me, I am sticky and it is humid in here and I'm gonna go take a nap. See you guys in the next one, bye. A bigger eagle. What, what, like a harpy? A harpy eagle? Central America's largest bird of prey that has a six foot wingspan and can weigh up to 20 pounds? How am I gonna get that? I'm sorry. Wait, is Penny Marshall related to the director, Scott Marshall? I like when Ben delivers mail, a white non-branded envelope and in midair it turns into a yellow DHL envelope. I like how Luke Wilson always has this guy in the background messing with him. He's my favorite character in this movie. Way to follow your heart, man. You're not in this movie, okay? You don't even know where he's going. He could be going to commit arson, you don't know. Despise it. I don't even know what it is. No one does! What could possibly be that loud? Oh my God. I could be brown, I could be blue. What did I say after that? I could be purple, I could be purple, I could be blue, 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 blue. Everything is blue. Everything is blue. His boobs, his mom, his dad. Everything is wavy and fuzzy and looks like crap because it's really humid in here. I should put on a hat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Have you ever seen my mom. <coughs> there's firecrackers in the piata. Piata, yes. There's firecrackers in the pin. There's firecrackers in the pinata. <laughs> there's firecrackers. There's firecrackers. <laughs> there's no charger here at the Stu Stu studio. How can I help? Shh. <gasps> yeah, this is Jessica Simpson's face. Again, Willie Nelson is there. He uh, really loves his granddaughter and he's got a pure brown braid with like no grays in it because his braid is like 30 years younger than his facial hair. Pile of junk, pile of junk. I am a pile of junk. You know what though? This lady, this business lady is actually pretty good. What is her name? I wanna watch more of her stuff. Penny Marshall. <gasps> Penny Marshall? As in Laverne and Shirley? I didn't recognize, no wonder I like her so much. Why'd you do this movie, Penny? She can't hear me. <laughs> I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie, it's really dumb. I hate this movie. I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie, it's really dumb. I hate this movie. I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie. I hate this movie, it's really dumb. I hate this movie. I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie. I hate this movie, it's really dumb. I hate this movie. I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie. I hate this movie, it's really dumb. I hate this movie. I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie. I hate this movie, it's really dumb. I hate this movie.
nailed it. <laughs>